This is the I Can Do Anything podcast. My name is Colin. Today I am talking about NBA basketball from Saturday and Sunday. Kind of a slow weekend in the NBA. No national television games, but there were a number of pretty good games. Uh, Mostly on Sunday, there were a couple good games on Saturday. I'll start with the NBA homepage website. There are a number of headlines on the homepage that I'd like to address. So Towns, Carl Anthony Towns, and Trey Young were named Players of the Week for Week 1. There's a there's a story. So Carl Anthony Towns on October 25th, which was Friday, had 37, 15, and 8 against the Hornets. Um, I don't know. It's the Hornets. The Hornets are not going to be very good this year, to say the very least. Trey Young... On October 26th, on Saturday, had 39 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds against the Magic. Um, He had 38 points, 7 rebounds, and 9 assists, and 1 steal on Thursday against the Pistons in a 17-point win. So, 39 and 38 in his two games thus far this season. So, I, I think rightfully so, just in terms of scoring these two guys... Carl Anthony Towns had 36, 37, and 23 in their three games. Um, Whoa, is the smoke from my leaves that I'm burning outside coming into my house? Did you hear that in my voice? I was having trouble breathing there for a second. I breathed in. That smells good, though. I really love the smell of leaves burning. Um, Anyways, so I think just in terms of scoring, these two are probably... It probably makes the most sense. It's probably justifiable. I think that so the so the Timberwolves are undefeated. They're three and zero. Andrew Wiggins is also is also playing pretty well. And there's another there's a I don't know. It's hard for me to 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 make any kind of rationale or any kind of like stance this early in a season. And there's a there's a title on one of these little headlines that is titled just that, jumping the gun. Let's face it, Trey Young is hot, but will his sizzling offensive start lead to a scoring title? The answer is no. Trey Young is not winning a scoring title. I don't know. The the scoring title scoring titles have nothing to do with a team's record, so it is possible. Like Trey Young could score a shitload of points this season, but not really win very many games or just, you know, be pretty mediocre. I mean, even if Atlanta goes to the playoffs this year, which I which I don't anticipate, that would be a really really big accomplishment. But I don't know, maybe the more I'm thinking about it, maybe Trey Young could win a scoring title this year. Because James Harden isn't going to score as many points this year as he did last year because of you know having Russell Westbrook now he had Chris Paul who certainly I don't know I don't think Chris Paul requires as many shots as as Russell Westbrook's ego probably is going to require this year so I think James Harden's scoring will will more than likely go down and he was the he won the scoring title last year I I don't know that to be true 100 percent but it's a really safe assumption. I'm almost 99% sure that James Harden won the scoring title. He averaged like 30-some points per game. Um, I think it was 34 points per game or somewhere around there. So James Harden uh, presumably was the scoring title champion last year. And I don't see him scoring that many points again this year. The Warriors look pretty terrible so far. <laughs> Uh, I'll get into that a little bit. Um, they lost, I think they lost twice over the weekend. Um, but maybe maybe the scoring title will go to a guy like Trey Young, who is going to, I mean, it looks like he's going to have a great scoring season. He, he could have, I mean, arguably, you could make the argument that he could have won Rookie of the Year over Luka. His second half was a lot better than Luka's second half, but Luka had like a great first three-fourths of the NBA season. His his first half was incredible. Um, he started to slow down a little bit 
in that that third fourth of the season the last fourth of the season wasn't nearly as great as the first half was for Luca last season but maybe a guy like Trey Young does win the scoring title because he really like he just it's pretty much just him <laughs> um they're really young and they're just building around their future superstar. I don't really see Trey Young as a future superstar. I see him as a really great piece. You know, Trey Young isn't going to be no guy Trey Young size. And don't 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 fool yourself. Steph Curry isn't Trey Young size. Steph Curry is probably a good three or four inches taller than Trey Young. They have a very similar game, and Steph Curry didn't do him do it himself either. Steph Curry was the best player on those championship teams before Kevin Durant came, but Klay Thompson is no slouch. And I would argue that that Klay Thompson may be maybe a better all around player than Steph Curry, just in terms of the game being if you just break it down to its offense and defense, Clay Thompson is far and away better at defense than Steph Curry. And Steph Curry is not far and away better at offense than Clay Thompson. You could make the argument that Clay Thompson is better on offense. I, I don't believe so. I think Steph, Steph Curry is a better ball handler. I don't think anyone would dispute that. The, the shooting, you could make the argument for Clay Thompson being a better shooter. I disagree. I think it's really close, but I would give Steph Curry the edge. I think most people would give Steph Curry the edge. Um, but, it, it, the, you know, Steph Curry is the best player on those teams. Draymond Green is no slouch. What I'm trying to say is that Trey Young is not winning by himself nobody wins by themselves it just doesn't happen which is part of the reason I got so so frustrated with Kyrie Irving leaving LeBron James thinking that he could go win by himself and to a certain degree it's it sort of feels like I mean I don't want to I don't want to shit on him too much because I, I do like Kyrie and he did choose to go to Brooklyn with Kevin Durant now he knew Kevin Durant was going to be out this season, but he still went there with the idea that he would be playing with Kevin Durant uh, in the future, or in the very near future. So, I don't know. Trey Young would be a really, really great point guard with paired with some other, some other superstar. But uh, I talked about that way longer than I thought I was going to. So... Trey Young, Carl Anthony Towns win Player of the week, Player of the Week. Uh, I don't look into Player of the Week all that much, although, you know, whoever wins Player of the Week most, generally speaking, wins the MVP. It's kind of you know, it's kind of how it works. You add up a hundred pennies and you get a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Does that does that analogy make any sense? Um, so. Let's get into this, the games from over the weekend. On Saturday, there were 10 games. Bucks and Heat. The Heat beat the Bucks. Antetokounmpo fouled out again, um, and they ended up losing after Antetokounmpo fouled out, unlike against the Hornets, so, or uh, not the Hornets, the Rockets. So the Heat were able to beat the Bucks with Antetokounmpo out. But James Harden and Russell Westbrook weren't. <laughs> uh, the 76ers beat the Pistons. Let's look at the box score from that one, see how Ben Simmons is improving, hopefully, with his jump shot. I, 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 the, the Pistons are, are terrible. <laughs> They're going to be pretty terrible this season, especially with, with uh, Blake Griffin missing a considerable amount of time. Derrick Rose scored 31 points off the bench in 26 minutes, 14 of 21 from the field, 66.7%. Wow, that's awesome. He had six turnovers but three assists. That's great. I fucking I, w I wish all the best for Derrick Rose. I uh, you know I, I I shit on the Pistons quite a bit. I shit on Blake Griffin kind of frequently, and I wish that Derrick Rose wasn't playing for the Pistons and wasn't playing with with Blake Griffin, but I want him to play like this because he's had a great 
beginning of the season as well. He played great. He played pretty well in their first game. I think the Pistons have played three games thus far. I'm not sure exactly what their record is off the top of my head, um, but uh, they're one and two, and this was one of their losses against the 76ers, one seventeen to one eleven. Um, Andre Drummond, 13 points. Markeith Morris, 17 points. Luke Kennard, 16 off the bench. But Derrick Rose, leading all scorers, I believe, in the game. Yeah, leading all scorers in the game with 31 points on 66% shooting from the field in only 26 minutes. That's impressive. Tobias Harris had 29. Al Horford had 29. Ben Simmons, 13 on 38.5% shooting. That's actually pretty terrible. Um, I mean, it's not good for anybody, really. 38% is is below average, I would say. Um, but for Ben Simmons, that's pretty bad. He shoots, uh, for last season, shot in the high 57 percentage. So um, no threes, obviously. That's not really a surprise. Ten assists, seven steals for Ben Simmons. Mike Scott had 17 off the bench. Um, did Joel Embiid not play? No, Joel Embiid didn't play. And they still beat the Pistons, which I guess isn't really a surprise. Like I said, the Pistons are not going to have a great year. Um, Raptors and Magic. Oh, that's tonight. It always does that. It bounces back to the current day. Celtics beat the Knicks. Kemba Walker had 32 points, seven three-pointers. Not going to really... I didn't watch any games on Saturday, so I really don't have a ton to say about them. Um, the Rockets beat the Pelicans 126-123. to 123. I do want to look at the box score from that one. Brandon Ingram had 35 points on 63% shooting from the field, 4 of 7 from 3. It's going to be Brandon Ingram's team um, in terms of scoring, I think. It looks like Josh Hart started instead of... Drew Holiday and Drew Holiday is not in the box score, so especially, especially with Drew Holiday not in the lineup, Brandon Ingram did the bulk of the scoring in this one, um, and they fell short. But <laughs> I get really nitpicky with the Rockets, but losing one tw- or only winning by three—I mean, a win is a win. Don't get me wrong, but only winning by three to the Pelicans, who are extremely young without Drew Holiday, is frightening if you're it should be frightening if you're a Rockets fan Lonzo Ball had 18 46 percent shooting from the field four of nine from three that's great that's great for Lonzo Ball Lonzo Ball shooting 44 percent from three and making four of them that is great for the Pelicans JJ Redick 14 points Josh Hart had 23 in a start 47.1 percent shooting eight of 17 five of 12 from three Brandon Ingram also added 15 rebounds uh, Alonzo Ball added 10 assists. They didn't get much bench productivity on the other side of the ball. James Harden, 29. Russell Westbrook, 28. This is what I was talking about earlier. James Harden, 29 for James Harden last season was like average, you know, or below. I mean, technically it was below average because he averaged in the low 30s. He's going to take less shots this season. He took – he, he <laughs> these guys – it's amazing. 8 of 29, 27.6%. So he scored 29 points, but shot terrible from the field. 2 of 18 from 3. 11.1% from 3. Why don't you take a couple less threes and distribute the ball a little bit better? James Harden had 8 turnovers, 5 assists, terrible assist to turnover ratio. Russell Westbrooks was a lot better. Actually really good. 13 to 4 assist to turnover ratio. 28 points on 52% shooting, 9 of 17. That's much better. These guys are going to balance the scoring out, though. I mean, I think for the season, I could see them both averaging in the high 20s, like 27 or so per game for both of them, and and that's right about where they were at in this game. P.J. Tucker had 16. Clint Capella had 15. They both shot really high percentages. Two for three from three for P.J. Tucker. Six of nine from the field. Seven of nine from... Uh, from the field for Capella, Austin Rivers eight off the bench, Eric Gordon thirteen off the bench. They they just they don't get enough bench productivity for me. 
to 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 make a run. I mean, Ryan Anderson didn't play. Tyson Chandler played six minutes. Ben McLemore, four minutes. Cephalosha, 13. Austin Rivers, 16. And Eric Gordon played 36. So they're, they're essentially playing six guys, the bulk of the minutes, with two guys playing in the teens minutes and then the rest only two I mean it's just it's just not a formula for long term it seems like they're missing somebody though Eddie House's son I I think that's Eddie House's son Daniel oh maybe not Daniel House Jr. so it's probably not Eddie House's son huh or he'd be Eddie House Jr. Uh, I think he starts for them I'm not sure though but I, it's kind of amazing. Well, no, it's not. Eric Gordon can't start when you got James Harden and Russell Westbrook. But yeah, the 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 Rockets just aren't deep enough. They don't do they don't do enough. They just don't get enough minutes from bench guys for it to be sustainable in the playoffs. And and that's what we've seen over Harden's tenure with the Rockets. It's just not sustainable once it gets to the playoffs. So the Cavs, uh, in their, in those, I really like the throwback uniforms that the Cavs were wearing. I heard somebody on NBA TV calling it ugly. Um, I think it was like on the top 10 that I watched or something where they called them ugly uniforms. I disagree. I, th- I think those, those throwbacks that they were wearing are really cool. And they, they, I like that NBA teams, when they do the throwback uniforms, also do a, the, the throwback court and like paint the court the way that it was when they were wearing those uniforms. I think that's a cool little touch. Um, Kevin Love had 21 points, 13 rebounds, and 9 assists. He's, I mean, Kevin Love's their star now. And I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Cavs. The Raptors beat the Bulls. I think I already said that. Spurs, Wizards. The Spurs beat the Wizards by two. DeRozan had 26 points in, in a game winner. The Jazz beat the Kings. The Kings have started 0-3. Um, this was one of Dobbs sleepers for the, for the upcoming season. And they've started out pretty poorly. Harrison Barnes, seven points. They didn't have anybody that scored. Their leading scorer was Dwayne Dedman with 11. Buddy Heald had three. De'Aaron Fox, nine. Trevor Ariza, no points in 23 minutes. Bogdan, 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 Bogdan. Bogdanovich, who's actually a, a good young player for them, had 10 points. Pretty underwhelming performance from the Kings, to say the very least. Um, the Kings have Bogdan Bogdanovich, and the Jazz have Bohan Bogdanovich. <laughs> I wonder if they're cousins. Probably not. That's probably a very common last name where they're from. Donovan Mitchell had 15. Mike Conley had 12. Um, Yeah, didn't watch this one. The one that I did actually want to talk about that I haven't talked about yet um, from Saturday night was the Suns beating the Clippers. Devin Booker had 16 of his 30 points in the fourth quarter. The Suns won 130 to 122. And Kawhi Leonard played well. I mean, this is, I don't know, it's, it's... it's so hard for me to take stuff away from games this early. Teams are still, you know, rubbing off the rust. Is that, is that how you say that? Rubbing the rust off? Kawhi had 27 on 47% shooting, 11 of 23, 3 of 6 from 3, 10 assists. Kawhi's assists are way up at the beginning of this season from last year. Now, he's, he's, he's got more to work with offensively in terms of his teammates. Um, but his assists are way up. Three turnovers, three steals, one block. Uh, they didn't get a lot, though, scoring-wise. Their starters, uh, Patrick Beverly had 11. That was the next closest uh, in terms of their starters in points. But then Montrez Harrell added 28. Lou Williams added 23. I just think it's really interesting that, that those guys don't start. Like, why wouldn't Montrez Harrell start over Patrick Patterson? He's clearly better. Like, Clearly far and away better. Lou Williams is far and away better than Landry Shamit. It's, it's I don't know the 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 role that uh, roles is a really th- uh, is in in basketball in general but especially in the NBA. Roles is a is like a is something that's preached so much and it almost just seems like this thing is like I don't know. Do I wonder if Montrez Harrell and Lou Williams want to come off the bench? 
I'd be interested like to know off the record what the, cause, cause they'd never say, I don't know. They might, I don't think that they would say, no, I, you know, I want to come off the, it would just cause a riff more than likely if they were to, you know, you don't want to go against whatever your coach has in mind. And doc rivers is a really fucking great coach. I mean, doc rivers has won championships and obviously I don't know anything about, you know, I've never spoke to the guy. I've never been in his huddle. I've never been in a meeting, a player's meeting. I've never been in the locker room, but everybody talks about how great of a coach he is. Now it's hard for me to, I don't know. It's all subjective because, you know, Phil Jackson won a lot of, a lot of championships, but he also had Michael Jordan. A coach is in a lot of ways, as good as their as their greatest player you know you could be a great coach and if you don't have good players you're not going to win a championship it's 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 pretty simple but uh doc rivers in every nba circle anybody that you talk to in the nba um speaks very highly of doc rivers coaching ability so these guys would never go against you know his philosophy i'm sure they have a lot of trust um in doc rivers but it's interesting to me that these guys like I could understand if Montrez Harrell was was coming off of, off of the bench behind somebody that was like, you know, where it wasn't, it was obvious that the be, the guy that was starting was better, and that Montrez Harrell was like a great piece off the bench. Lou Williams the same, but Montrez Harrell is is way better than Zubats, and is is a little older than Zubats as well. Patrick Patterson is a vet. Um, and Montrezl Harrell is like in his third or fourth year, maybe fourth or f- third or fourth or fifth year, somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't Montrezl Harrell start over Patrick Patterson or Zubats? He's clearly better, clearly, like without question. Lou Williams is clearly better than Landry Shamit. He's a veteran in this league who is. You know, it, over his career, my guess is averages probably 18 a game in his career. Averages 24.6 minutes per game in his career, 14.2 points per game. And Landry Shamit is a second-year guy. I don't know. That's weird. So on the other side of the ball, Devin Booker obviously had a big game. Who else played well for them? Kelly Oubre had 20 points. Dario Saric, I didn't know he was in, in Phoenix, had 15. They got they got a pretty good spread. Aaron Baines had 14. Devin Booker, 30 points. 10 of 20 from the field. 3 of 6 from 3. 7 of 8 from the free throw line. 8 assists. 4 turnovers. No steals. No blocks. Frank Kaminsky had 18 off the bench. Tyler Johnson, 10 off the bench. Mikhail Bridges, 7 off the bench. Shot a pretty high percentage. 60%, 3 of 5 from 3. Then we move on to Saturday. No, not Saturday, Sunday. But before I do that, let me tell you about Ludus. Selling tickets should be easy so you can focus on what truly matters, your production. The I Can Do Anything podcast is powered by Ludus, built from the ground up for a high school theater director. Ludus is free and simple online ticket sales for K-12 through schools with a customized ticketing portfolio. Uh, portal, just kidding, a customized ticketing portal. Ludus offers great customization features. One of the best features Ludus has to offer is the ability to generate detailed reports. Ludus also offers powerful reserved seating with Ludus's customers with Ludus customer services a breeze. Oftentimes it's nice to talk to a real person who understands what your job consists of. Ludus offers real-time support and has sold over 1 million tickets since its foundation in 2015. Visit ludus.com and start selling tickets today with Ludus's forever 100% free guarantee to your program. That's l u d u s.com. ludus.com. Visit it today. Okay. So, Sunday's games, there were some good ones. Uh, I watched the Nets and the Grizzlies. Um, most of the second half, that one finished with a buzzer beater. The Portland Trailblazers and the Mavs, I watched that entire game. That was a really great back-and-forth game with a lot of, I mean, four great stars in the NBA. That was a really fun game to watch. Timberwolves beat the Heat. Um, Wiggins has three straight threes to snap a 101, a 101, 101 tie. I'm going to start with that one because I didn't watch that one at all. And then I watched... 
the whole Lakers and Hornets game. So I'll start with the with the T Wolves over the over the Heat, one sixteen to one oh nine. Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins both playing very well this season to to start off. Um, Carl Anthony Towns, like I said earlier, finished with twenty three points. 8 of 21 from the field, 38.1%. 4 of 11 from 3, 36.4%. 11 rebounds, 4 assists. Jeff Teague had 8 assists on 5 of 8 shooting, 21 points. 1 of 3 from 3. Andrew Wiggins had 25 points. That's their big three. Carl Anthony Towns, Jeff Teague, and Wiggins all scoring in the 20s. Robert uh, Robert Covington had 11. Sebastian Napier had 12 off the bench for Miami. I believe that, yeah, um, Jimmy Butler isn't playing yet for Miami because of the birth of his child. Um, I don't re- know any of these people. Justice Winslow started at point guard. <laughs> Why wouldn't Goran Dragic start at point guard? He played 27 minutes. Justice Winslow started at point guard for Miami. That's wild. That's really funny to me. Um, but played well, scored 20 points, 8 of 17 from the field, 47%. It's pretty good. 2 of 3 from 3, 66.7% uh, 66. from 3 is good. 6 assists, 4 turnovers. That's a that's an okay, I mean, for a small forward, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good assist to turnover ratio. 2 blocks, 1 steal. Kendrick Nunn had 25 points. I don't know who that is. 9 of 17, 52 point. 9% from the field, 55.6% from three, five of nine from three. Um, so then we go back to, let's go to the Thunder and the Warriors. The Thunder beat the Warriors 120 to 92. Everybody's talking about how bad the Warriors are playing. I'm assuming I have seen a, a couple of headlines where Stephen A appeared to be yelling about the Warriors being so terrible. <laughs> Draymond had 10. Marquise Chris had 10. D'Angelo Russell had six. Dude. Six points. 30% shooting from the field. 0 of 1 from 3. Steph Curry, 2 of 9. 22% from 3. 23, uh, 23 points in 30 minutes for Curry. Didn't get tons off the bench, and I assume most of those bench points were in garbage time. They don't even have a bench this year. Jordan Poole is probably their best bench player. That's wild. They went from so, like, the best, potentially the greatest team ever assembled, or at least the team with the most firepower ever assembled, to they're, they're for, I don't even know who their fourth best player is. <laughs> Draymond Green used to be their fourth best player, and he was a fucking perennial all-star. And their fourth best player is Glenn Robinson the third, who scored three points on 14% shooting, one of seven from the field, 0 of three from three. Marquise Chris is their starting center. Omari Spellman played 24 minutes and had nine points. I don't know who Jacob Evans is. Jordan Poole is a rookie. Damian Lee. I mean, they played, yeah, they, a lot of it was garbage time. They played one, two, three, four, five. So they played 11 guys in double figure minutes. Their whole team played. OKC, on the other hand, Chris Paul only had 10. It's it's amazing. Chris Paul only had 10 and they're winning the game. Dennis Schroeder had 22. Shea Gilders Alexander had 19 on 57% shooting from the field. Dennis Schroeder shot 75% from the field. Danilo Gallinari had 21 on 45.5% shooting from the field. 44.4% from 3, 4 of 9. Steven Adams had 10 rebounds and 8 points. Shea Gilders Alexander had 4 assists. Chris Paul only had 2 assists. They, they, like Their stat line is really not even impressive. Nobody's stat line was impressive. Their leading scorer is Dennis Schroeder off the bench and Danilo Gallinari. Two guys that, you know, on playoff teams wouldn't start. Dennis Schroeder doesn't start for the for the Thunder. That's because of Chris Paul. He started in Atlanta. I believe he just played last year in Orlando, maybe. Or he might have been with the actually he might have been 
with OKC last year, um, but started behind or came off the bench behind Russ. Um, so yeah, OKC's numbers like aren't even impressive, and they beat the Warriors. So we move next to the Nets and the Grizzlies. John ja Morant scored. I think he had like 17 in the fourth quarter. John ja Morant, I mean, gave Kyrie a run for his money. He had 17 in the fourth quarter, and they won in overtime on a buzzer beater from uh, uh, Jay Crowder. But John ja Morant was great in the fourth quarter. That guy looks so skinny. And Kyrie outscored him. Kyrie had 37. John ja Morant had 30. But John ja Morant blocked Kyrie's game winner attempt uh, to force overtime when it was tied. And and they won the game. I mean, John ja Morant had the assist, brought the ball up the floor, created that play um, for Jay Crowder to hit that three, which is, uh, I, you know, I'm not a fan of either team. Uh, I'm just a fan of basketball and and in good games and that that shot got me off my seat <laughs> i and, and we're in we're about well tomorrow we'll be we're, we're six days into the nba season karis lavert had 27 for the knicks or the nets Kyrie 37 on 11 of 27 shooting from the field 40.7 percent 5 of 12 from 341.7 percent 10 of 11 from the free throw line seven assists two steals two turnovers Torrin Prince had 12 Joe Harris had 13 a big tip in uh I think his tip in was to tie the game or or I'm not sure but that was a Joe Harris had a had a I think playing for Team USA and just have being you know Team USA was was pretty bad obviously in comparison to most Team USA teams in the history of USA basketball but Joe Harris, I think, probably built a lot of confidence just from having such a big role on the Team USA team. And and he, I don't know, he hasn't had a great beginning of the season. But just watching that game last night, you can tell that he's playing with a lot more confidence than he was last year. So John Morant then on the other side of the ball finished with 30 points on, shot a better percentage from the field, took less shots, was far more efficient than Curry, 11 of 27, or not Curry, Kyrie. Kyrie was 11 of 27, shot 40% from the field, and John ja Morant was 13 of 22, so took five less shots, 59.1% from the field, almost 20% better, but finished with seven less points, but got the win. Dylan Brooks had 21 points, Valanchunas had 16, Jaron Jackson an underwhelming performance. I would like to see him play a lot better. Uh, he had 12 points on 50% shooting, 4 of 8, 2 of 4 from 3, 1 assist, only 6 rebounds. He needs to rebound the ball better. Um, they played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 guys in double figure minutes. And then another, and then one other guy that didn't play double figure minutes. So they played 11 guys. This is that's a that's something that I that I'm going to pay a lot more attention to is how deep teams go throughout the regular season and then how how much that maybe changes um, once the playoffs come around because the more, the deeper you are in the regular season, you know the more the more chances these guys get the opportunity on your bench to go into the game and and get some some experience. These playoff teams that that benefits so much. And it's really hard to measure, obviously, but that benefits so much once the playoffs come around. The other game, this was the best game of the night, Blazers and Mavericks. The Blazers won 121-119. to 119. Rodney Hood played well. He had a really great first quarter and, and that bled into the second quarter a little bit. He had 20 points on 8 of 12 shooting, 66.7% from the field, 3 of 3 from three-point line. Six rebounds, no assists, no uh, two turnovers, two steals, and a block. Zach Collins left with an injury, but had ten points. Hassan Whiteside, I was, uh, I don't want to say I was impressed, but he only had six points on fifty percent shooting, two of four from the field, but did grab fourteen rebounds. I just liked his activity defensively. I thought I thought he at least made himself a factor. He uh, he only had one block, but fouled out of the game too but 
I, I, I don't know. I was kind of skeptical of this move. I still think that they may deal Hassan Whiteside come the come the trade deadline. I don't know that he will stay on this team, but I just from watching this game, I wasn't unimpressed by by Hassan Whiteside. I didn't think he got in the way. So at least he's not he's not, you know, he's using up his fouls <laughs> and he's not getting in the way of of McCollum and Lillard. He's not like begging for post-ups. He'd be crazy to do that with Damian Lillard and McCollum, who were both very impressive. McCollum had 35 points, uh, both shot 50% from the field. Damian Lillard had 28 points and five assists. McCollum had four assists. Um, McCollum was plus 12. Damian Lillard was minus 11 and uh, plus minus. Kent Bazemore played pretty well off the bench, 11 points, four of eight shooting from the field, one of two from three. They didn't get a ton of bench production either. Um, they played six, seven, eight guys in double-figure minutes. Anthony Tolliver played three minutes, and some other guy whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce played five minutes. On the other side of the ball, Chris Dapps Porzingis was really fun to watch. He played great. I mean, he was hitting like... like the, some of the step-backs that he was making, just the, the, the amount of space he's covering with his step back just due to his length is really impressive. He had 32 points on 11 of 23 shooting 47.8%. 3 of 10, 30% from 3 isn't the greatest, but um I think he he's certainly capable of shooting a better percentage than that uh from 3, 9 rebounds, 5 assists for Porzingis. Doncic had 29 points on 8 of 12 uh, 8 of 22 from the field shooting 36.4%. 2 of 11 from from 3 is pretty bad, 18.2%. 11 of 14, 78.6% from the free throw line, 9 assists. These two are going to be I mean, they very easily could have won this game and there is there, you know, those stats would have looked a lot better had they won, but those I mean, between the four of them, Porzingis, Doncic, McCollum and, and Lillard. It was a really fun game to watch. It was really back and forth. The the you know the Mavs were up for a while, and then the Blazers came back. The Mavs really led a majority of this game. Actually, the, the Blazers cut it. I mean, they were down by like fifteen or sixteen at one point, late in the third, early in the fourth, and and ended up you know coming back and winning um, by three. This was the best game of the night. I, I really enjoyed. Uh, just CJ McCollum scores in so many ways. Kristaps Porzingis can, you know, hit a, a a step back where he's like doing dribble moves and and stepping back, you know, like covering like six feet with a step back, which is it doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, take a take a six foot step and then try to gather yourself and shoot the ball into a cylinder that is roughly 24 inches in diameter and from 23, almost 24 feet from that cylinder and the cylinder's 10 feet in the air. It's not easy to gather yourself after, after taking that big of a step. I mean, Chris Stapps Porzingis, he's not, I mean, he played 34 minutes in this one, which I think they. I think during the broadcast they talked about him being not on a minutes restriction, but they were just watching his minutes, and they want to keep him somewhere around like twenty three to twenty seven minutes. Uh, so he played more minutes than I think they would have would have liked, but they were in the game. I mean, they led most of the game, but it wasn't a secure lead. Um, I think if it would have been sixteen with like you know five to seven minutes left in the game, he probably would have come out you know, bringing his minutes down to right about that, right about that. If, if, if he played 34 minutes, let's say they had a good lead, a secure lead, and he could have came out with six minutes, that would have been um, 28 minutes. So just a little bit above the minutes threshold that they want for him. But Porzingis and Doncic were really fun to watch. McCollum scores the ball in so many ways. His mid-range jump shot is, is so good. Damian Lillard is, is one of my favorite players in the league and is just a really fun um, these, I mean, those are going to be two two really fun teams to watch. Those are going to be my league pass favorites this season, uh, the Mavs and the and the Blazers. But the NBA, I was actually watching this game on my phone while I made dinner, and the NBA app it has a cool a couple cool features that they've added this year um, within the league pass. Um, 
where they're like doing trivia questions at halftime just about players and teams um players for for both teams that you know for the game that you're watching um they do like little poll questions during the game one of you know a couple of them was like who who would you rather build your your team around Luka Doncic or Damian Lillard or how far do you think the Mavericks will go this season and it gave you multiple choice you know like uh, first round or won't make the playoffs first round second round and all the rounds throughout the playoffs there were a couple like who do you think will go further who do you think will have more wins blah 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 so that's a cool feature that that uh the nba app has incorporated that was fun to do throughout the game i don't know that it like i don't think that it was adding up points when i did the trivia it was like 15 trivia questions i got two of them wrong and it told me that i did a bad job <laughs> um so uh, i don't know maybe i <laughs> the questions weren't easy i mean they weren't hard but i got 13 out of 15 is a pretty good percentage man if i shot 13 of 15 from the field that's damn good james harden wishes he could shoot 13 of 15 from the field i'll tell you that so then the last game Uh, was the Lakers and the Hornets. Dwight Howard played great, man. Dwight Howard thus far is proving to have bought in to what the Lakers are trying to do. He's proven to be willing to just, just do the dirty work. Dwight Howard had off the bench, played 22 minutes, had 16 points, shot 100% from the field, 8 of 8, probably all layups and dunks. I think he shot a little floater or a little hook. Um, but a couple post-ups, a couple catches in transition where he made a dribble, got fouled and scored. A couple easy dunks from passes from LeBron. Um, grabbed 10 rebounds, was plus 23 and plus minus, had four blocks, so he's doing it defensively. I've been impressed with Dwight Howard, and he's. it seems like he's bought in to this system, um, bought into playing with LeBron and Anthony Davis, and his is isn't letting his ego you know, change the way he's playing coming off the bench. Dwight Howard's a guy that was a perennial all-star. I thought would win defensive player of the year every single season that he played in the NBA. And he's accepted the fact that, you know, he's not the guy that he was in terms of just his status in the NBA. He's not the player that he was anymore. Um, And credit to Dwight Howard for accepting it and, I mean, he's going to earn more minutes. He's going to earn more respect if he continues to be humble and play the way that he's playing and just do what the Lakers ask of him. Rebound, block shots, set screens, and just be active defensively. Um, LeBron was in assist mode last night, had 12 assists, four turnovers, one steal, finished with 20 points, but didn't score until the second quarter. And I don't even think he... You know, he may not he may not have even scored until the second half. But I was worried that his double his double figure scoring streak was in was in jeopardy. Uh but then he just turned it on and scored twenty points in like the last maybe in the last like sixteen to twenty minutes of the game. And it's it's amazing to see him flip the switch. You could just see like towards the end of that game it was it was sort of close in the fourth quarter uh, you know like the the hornets were still in reach sort of and he just kind of flipped the switch and you know something that nba guys and lebron himself have talked about you know i think lebron used to talk about it from a team perspective like we can't just all of a sudden flip the switch he himself can flip the switch he was doing it more as a leader to try to get to try to get his guys to not relax and not settle um, because he can certainly flip the switch. Last night was a perfect example of it. He was in assist mode and was just really distributing and passing. Anthony Davis was great last night, had 29 points, but just affected the game in every single facet, like was just great in every single facet. Shot a high percentage, 10 of 19, 52.6% from the field, 3 of 5 from 3, 60, uh, 60% from the field after not having made a 3 in their prior two games, made 3 of 5, uh, was 6 of 6 from the free throw line, had 14 rebounds, um, 3 blocks, just affects the game in so many different ways. JaVale McGee had 10 as their starting center. Danny Green had his worst game of the season, but it didn't seem like he played bad. He only had five points on two of 10 shooting from the field, one of five from three, two assists and four rebounds. But 
I don't think he played bad by by any respect. Um, Contavious Caldwell Pope also hit his first three uh, and scored his first points of the season, surprisingly, um, but had 10 points off the bench. Shot 50% from the field and from three. Quinn Cook had 12 points off the bench. Troy Daniels had five. Alex Caruso had five and a steal that led to a dunk. Alex Caruso has impressive jump. Uh, he, he, his, uh, his jumping ability is kind of underrated. Um, LeBron shot five of five from the free throw line. They talked during the broadcast. I was watching the Lakers uh, sports, what is it, Spectrum Sportsnet broadcast and uh, they were talking about how LeBron seems like he's taking more time at the free throw line and, and he's shooting the ball uh, this season from the free throw line a lot better. He shot 100% in this game. If I go to his stats for the season, he's um, shooting 82 or 88.2%. I mean, obviously, it's a really small sample size. Shooting 88.2% from the free throw line this season. Uh, that's his best ever. His next best was, let's see, 75.4 his rookie year, 76.7 in 2009, his last year with Cleveland, 77.1 in his second year in Miami in 2011. That looks like, yeah, his best. So his best free throw percentage was 77.1 2011 in his second season with Miami. That was the year that, that he won his first championship. Um so shooting 11 percent uh 11 percentage points better this season obviously in a small sample size that's one area that that he's pretty heavily and pretty widely criticized on is his free throw free throw shooting so i would love to see lebron continue to shoot the free throw uh shoot well from the free throw line this season as he is this season um for the rest of the season it's just a season a lot there so um i think that about wraps it up today for the i can do anything podcast looking forward to tonight no national television games tonight although there are a slew of games tonight there are 11 games the ones that stand out pacers pistons no bulls knicks no 76ers hawks i'll probably watch that one actually just because of the 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 start that that uh, trey young is having both teams are undefeated the 76ers are entertaining to watch so i'll cover that game in the next episode 76ers and hawks magic raptors nah thunder rockets i'll probably watch that one Cavs bucks i may watch just because i don't really watch the Cavs ever and antetokounmpo is fun to watch warriors pelicans probably not trailblazers spurs i may get to that one if i can jazz and Suns, maybe because the jazz are intriguing to me this season the nuggets and the kings probably not hornets and clippers um so yeah a lot of games tonight NBA TV has the Clippers and the Hornets, so I can't watch that one. And I can't watch Warriors and Pelicans. So, 11 games tonight in the NBA. Um, Sloan is all over me about getting this. I, I've been contr- quality control editing this this long-ass podcast um, from a couple weekends ago when uh, all my buddies did a podcast with me. Um, I've been editing that yesterday saturday sun well not yesterday saturday i did a little bit of editing on it and then i was just uh listening and watching to watching just to <laughs> i was listening and watching to it today just to make sure that i want to post it um and make sure that the that the audio is synced up properly i'm a real stickler and real picky about that kind of thing but sloan is all over me wanted to get that podcast posted i was laughing pretty hard a number of different times but i can't i i I feel i feel like it's because it's my friends i don't think anybody other than the people in the room and the people that were mentioned in that podcast will think it's as funny as we do but that's okay it's the i can do anything podcast and you can just not listen but thanks for listening to this episode i don't know when i'll be back but i'll be covering those games that i just talked about peace